Four of the nation's ten largest reservoirs are along the Missouri River. So writes Bernard Shanks. He's an advisor to Resource Renewal Institute, and he joins us now on Total Information AM. Those reservoirs are held with dams, and you write that some of those dams have some real problems. Tell us about it. Well, they're part of the nation's uh, failing infrastructure. Uh, they're between 50 and 70 years old, and, and dams like bridges and people, as they get old, weaken. They need a lot of work, and they're subject to fail. The problem this year is in the history of these dams, uh, they've never had so much water behind them. They've never had as much pressure on them. And I have followed this issue for 40 years, and I have never seen them more at risk than they are today. I imagine, too, uh, that as time has gone by, if anybody had suggested that these dams be shored up or fixed, if there's not that much water in them, eh, you know, there's other things to put the money towards, and now here we are, and there's not much you can do at this particular point. That's right. We're at a, at a cusp of time. The, the Corps of Engineers, to their credit, has requested many billions of dollars to rework some of these projects, and we're at a period where they're, we're in debt. We have... Um, People are reluctant to pay taxes. We're in a period of climate change, which brings more extremes in temperature and rainfall and, and snow in the mountains, which are still up there. And the case of these dams, because the highest one upstream, the farthest one away, is the most at risk, this is something that we cannot afford to ignore. Is this the Fort Peck Dam that you're referring to? The Fort Peck Dam is the highest of the six major dams. It's... it's uh, about 1,500 miles from St. Louis. It's in eastern Montana. It was built with a, with a type of construction that it, uh, was never used again, in part because Fort Peck failed when it was under construction in 1938. It killed eight men who were buried inside that dam today. And it's, uh, it's subject to failure. It has never had as much water. Yesterday they started dumping... Um, the fir- using the, f- the floodgates for the first time in 35 years. So this dam has never had pressure on it the way it does now. Another one of the dams that you mentioned, Garrison Dam, it was built 50 years ago. It has never had its floodgates open. I, I guess we're not even quite sure at this point that they'll be working properly, but are there other concerns about that? Well, uh, Garrison Dam, which is the biggest of these six, in Oahe d- downstream, uh, immediately downstream in uh, South Dakota, both had problems with their foundation when they were built. They were built on a on a shale foundation that was subject to collapse. Uh, that's still an issue. It's interesting that when they opened the floodgates on Garrison the first time about a week ago, they they found problems with the spillway, and uh, they had to shut it down, do emergency repairs over the weekend. And if you look at the videos of those spillways now, it is awesome, the water hmm. that's going over. This is and the a, thing is that if the spillway fails, all six of these dams are made of earth. And if the concrete surface on the spillways fails, then you have trouble. And there's so much water in all of them, the Corps doesn't have many options as to how to cope with it. This is Bernard Shanks, an advisor to Resource Renewal Institute. Are we looking at a domino-like effect? And we'll use the Fort Peck Dam as an example. It's the highest up from where we are. If it goes, there's going to be a huge amount of water released. Will that cause failures in the other dams? I, I find it hard to imagine that you could dump a reservoir that's 175 miles long uh, with something like uh, 20 million acre feet of water to cover 20 million acres to a foot level in Fort Peck, and Garrison could handle it. I don't think the floodgates could handle it. it the, the good news for St. Louis is if this happened, the water would take about 10 days to get to St. Louis. But it, you, it's very possible you would have a domino effect. It would be the, the most uh, epic man-made disaster in the United States. Wow, okay, this sounds like a total train wreck now. So we're talking about the release of water on purpose. They're going to purposely be releasing water uh, downriver to relieve some of these dams. But if all of if, if you factor in the water that's purposely being released and the water that could be released because these dams are going to fail, um, the combination of those two, what, what do you think might be the impact on the St. Louis area? There would be a flood like you've never seen. Um, 
it would be literally of biblical proportions. That's what what is, for me, of such concern is that these are so old, they have been neglected like a lot of our bridges and highways, and the Corps doesn't have a lot of choices. The idea of flood control dam is you drain them in the fall and winter, they have lots of space when spring comes, because in the Midwest, you, the Missouri River has always had two, two flood seasons, one in April when the snow in the plains and ice melts in March and early April, and a lot of rain, and another one when the snow in the mountains melts. And the snow in the mountains of Montana and Wyoming is far above average. There, there's snow you know, 30, 40 feet deep. That has just started to melt. That is Bernard Shanks, advisor to Resource Renewal Institute, joining us this morning on Total Information AM. Mr. Shanks, thanks very much for the help. We appreciate it.